everyone, welcome to the online open evening of the Bachelors of Science in Business Administration. As I'm speaking to you right now, we're actually making history. You might think we're making history. Well, this is the first time that we're organizing an event online. So there's a first time for everything, right? This one came a bit sooner than expected, but we're here. Um, of course, we would have rather met each and single one of you in person together with my colleagues, but, but we're very happy to still provide your information this way. My name is Monica and I'm one of the program advisors uh, for, for the Bachelor's of Business Administration program. But today I'm happy to introduce two of my guests that are here with me. Um, so right here on my left hand side we have Case Coma. Case is a professor in accounting and finance as well as in entrepreneurship. He's not only a professor, but he is also an alumnus of Nairoda. Back in 2001, he followed the, the Masters of Management here in Breukele. Um, so he's a true Nairodian, or how we like to call it, a true Nairodian. And then right here on my right hand side, I am happy to introduce Stein van der Vat. He's a third year bachelor student and he's in his final sprint because he's writing his thesis and then he is graduating. So both very knowledgeable um, guests that I have here with me tonight. So both of you, thank you so much for being here. I really appreciate it. But before we jump into the actual program, I would love to show you a video about um, what our university is about. So here we go. Nijrode Business Universiteit is in 1946 opgericht voor en door het bedrijfsleven. En kenmerkt zich van oudsher door een sterke internationale oriëntatie. Nu. Bijna 75 jaar later zijn we een plek waar werelden samenkomen. We slaan een brug tussen de academische wereld en het bedrijfsleven. Tussen wetenschappelijk onderzoek en de praktijk. En tussen beginnende studenten en ervaren alumni. Wij geloven dat een stevige basis ieder mens tot grote hoogtes kan brengen. Die basis vind je op Nijenrode. In Breukelen en in Amsterdam. We combineren academische theorie, praktische relevantie en persoonlijke ontwikkeling. Zodat jij succesvol aan jezelf en aan je carrière kan bouwen. Nijenrode is een brug naar jouw toekomst. I love watching this clip. I've probably, I don't even, I, I lost count a long time ago, but I really think when it comes to Nairoda, it hits the nail right on the head um, when it comes to distinguishing our university compared to other ones. So they speak about practical relevance, which is of course very important. You learn a lot of theory, but you also learn how you actually have to apply the theory into practice. Personal development, we don't only want to challenge and educate you on an academic level, but also on a personal and profes professional level. So to make sure once you are graduating after the three years that you are, or you are becoming the, the responsible leader that Nairoda stands for, as well as the alumni network. That's very huge, of course. We have alumni over a hundred different countries. So um, one of my favorite, uh, favorite clips. So I think it's, it's definitely uh, something great for you guys to, to have seen. So let's get over now with my two guests uh, who are here with me today. So for you, Case, I can imagine it's very different and maybe strange that you're not on campus right now and you're, and you're not seeing your students at all. Like, how are you experiencing that? And how are you trying to still keep your students involved? Uh, thank you, Monica. Well, uh, indeed, uh, these are quite uh, tough times. I miss my students. I miss my classroom. Uh, finally, we have one event uh, still in this uh, Pfizer uh, environment so where we normally do the lectures. So I'm really happy to finally sit here again. Uh, to face see people. To, yeah, face to face context. That's what, what I live for. And that is what, uh, how you can really do a lecture. 
I try to create the turnaround, uh, the turnaround as whole nine road it does at this moment in time, uh, because we need to fully switch to digital. So I'm making movie clips, I'm doing live streaming, and at the same time I created a very small video studio at, uh, at my small office that I have in Haarlem. And uh, I have my own flip over, and that's where I hang up all the pictures of my individual students. So every now and then I can switch my cameras, and then I can see all the students in the, uh, in the picture. And then I pick just a random student, and I tell them, please, come in my show. <laughs> that's then, amazing. Uh, I, I hope to involve them a little bit more. So I bet when, you're, when your children or wife walk into that office, they see so many different students there, they're like, who is this, daddy? <laughs> so, but that, that's great. And so I'm also, you know, the, the, the COVID-19 um, is going on right now, who has... Yeah. Uh, that has an, a, an enormous impact um, on everyone, you know, whether it's an event that's being canceled or not being able to see uh, family members. Yeah. Um, but of course, it has a huge impact on the economy as well. Yeah. How do you incorporate this business study in your lectures? Is there maybe an example that you, that you can give us? Uh, yes, because fortunately, my, my courses and my uh, experience doesn't really change. I mean, uh, uh, even with uh, Stein, uh, Stein is already in his third year, so he already did advanced accounting and finance. And in advanced accounting and finance, we focused fully on the company HEMA. And uh, for example, HEMA is quite exciting. And not only now, but also the past years. Uh, but right now, something is happening that we already discussed in our class. Because uh, HEMA is known because of its financing uh, structure. HEMA has quite a lot of debts, 750 million. And HEMA has to pay up around about 50 million euros of interest every year. And that is, in fact, way too much for their operations. So even during our course, uh, me and Stein and all his uh, fellow teammates, uh, we discussed and deliberated that uh, the interest payments were way too high. So the owner right now, Marcel Buchhorn, maybe you know him, uh, a multi-billionaire, two billion euros. I can yeah. speak about this quite long. Um, he is owning the HEMA, but he doesn't put in any equity. So the equity level is quite low, and the value of the assets is only primarily consisting of goodwill, intangible assets. It is quite complex, yeah. but we already de debated that uh, there's no other situation that Marcel Buchhorn is going to go to his financiers and say, you know what, you have to accept the fact that you get a lower interest, because otherwise selling all our Roquevorsten and all our other stuff <laughs> is not going to be profitable. Yeah. And you know what, Corona hits, COVID hits, and he immediately makes use of that situation. Yeah. So, I'm not discussing that for a very long time yet. I mean, we only had Corona for some weeks. Exactly. But, but yes, it's a you perfect can use example. it immediately. Yeah, that's great. And for Stein, you being a third, third year student, I can imagine it already being quite stressful being in your third year because you're trying to wrap up things. Um, how has the COVID-19 affected you? <coughs> yeah, it's uh, pretty strange, uh, Monica, because we, uh, uh, we are in the middle of our thesis writing now. So I'm uh, trying to end, uh, end my, uh, uh, my whole experience here. Um, and that gets a very different dimension at the moment because, uh, as Case already mentioned, you have the face-to-face -face contact also with your uh, supervisor for your thesis and that falls away now. So that means that it's uh, for the lecturer, but also for the student, I think, uh, more of a challenge to uh, make sure that you get across the right things. So that you uh, transfer the, uh, the right knowledge, that you transfer the right feedback, uh, and that you um, have a different focus in uh, focusing on, um, uh, on the way that, uh, that you need to receive the feedback from your super supervisor, as well as, as the supervisor needs to focus on different things in giving the feedback. Exactly. You miss a lot of face-to-face uh, -face conversation uh, uh, things. Right, yeah, I can, I can definitely ima in, imagine. Um, not is it only in a certain time for, for, for us here at the table, but also for you all watching. Um, maybe some of you wanted to go for a gap year, but obviously that's being canceled right now, or you know, it's going to be a bit harder to travel this next year. Um, or your final examinations have been canceled. So we still, and we, and we can't um, welcome you here on our campus to give you the feel of Nairoda, but that's why we're, we're having this session. So I would like to ask you, Stein, if you can describe for potential new students what it's like to be a bachelor student here in Nairoda. 
<laughs> That's a pretty broad question, uh, actually. Um, what it's like, I think uh, the whole experience here as a bachelor student is that um, you start here, uh, you on campus, because in Breukelen it's a different uh, experience than in Amsterdam, Definitely. of course. Uh, but I started here in Breukelen and you come on a campus, you arrive on a campus with all different students, uh, different education, because there are also master's students uh, living there. Uh, so uh, a lot of things are uh, coming your way. Uh, also new experiences, new uh, uh, temptations, everything that, that uh, things you want to do. And it, it's very challenging, I think, uh, to keep the overview, but also to uh, set the right priorities every time. Um, so I think that's the biggest challenge I had in my first year as a bachelor student, yeah. uh, but also the most valuable lesson learned. And then you, you learned that for your second year, so you didn't make the same mistakes anymore. Yeah, sometimes. <laughs> sometimes. But I think we it's will always come a learning to process, later. right? Yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. And then, um, how did you experience the, the curriculum? How is the curriculum for you? Um, what I uh, really like in the curriculum is that um, lecturers really have also the practical knowledge. So it's not only about the theoretical part, but it's also about, okay. Um, uh, practice uh, pra uh, an example from practice. So uh, something I experienced as a lecturer. Case Kalman does that a lot in his lectures, uh, and that's pretty cool because you really remember the stuff better when it is applicable to a real situation. So I like the practicality <laughs> of the lectures, and um, during the curriculum, I think it's a, a great addition or maybe a good combination together with all the practical knowledge you get from a student association or the direct feedback you get on a campus, living together with a lot of students who uh, uh, have their uh, uh, have their strong words as well, if needed. Yeah. Uh, so, um, uh, yeah, I think it's it's the whole combination is really the added value uh, here. Great. And what was in your first year something that you struggled with most or like the learning? Because we just talked about that already, but yeah. what was it specifically that you learned in your first year? Yeah. Um, I think, uh, it, it, as said, you get a lot of different things coming your way. You want to do it all because everything is fun, uh, but then you need to choose, you need to set priorities, and you need to keep all the balls in the air. Uh, and I think that is very challenging. Besides, and when you say yeah. trying to keep all the balls in the air, what do, you, what do you mean exactly? Yeah, you need to combine all those things. So it's uh, end your work for committees within the association. It's uh, finishing your group work for uh, Case Comus uh, subjects uh, and courses. And many others. Uh, and many, <laughs> and many others. Um, but uh, it's, it's about doing a lot of separate things at once. And I think uh, uh, that is uh, that is pretty valuable. So time time management. Time I management. would I would say yeah, too, yeah, right? Yeah. That's uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, case the 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 program is known for its practical relevance. Doing your lectures, how do you combine theory with practice? Theory and practice. Uh, that is uh, that is the main philosophy of uh, of Nijenrode. If you would come here, uh, by the way, at this university, you would see on top of the uh, the doorstep uh, Nijenrode Business University. Uh, Nijenrode is a business university, so we combine business with university. Uh, that's what I love. That's also why I studied here. Uh, that's why I started my own business. Every entrepreneur, I give a small applause. Yeah, start your business. Do your own thing. Um, so that helps in my lectures because I can bring in my own practice situations uh, from my uh, advisory practice. Uh, at the same time, every business example that I see, whether it's the HEMA or any other business, I immediately incorporate them. That's the only way how I can do the learning experience in, uh, in the best way. And if students want to start up anything themselves, of course, I'm immediately enthusiastic and I'm trying to facilitate them in the best way. Yeah. In fact, even uh, Stein already did his own initiative, I believe, some weeks ago. But maybe he will share something about that. Maybe if we're lucky, he's going to share some with us. I'm not sure if he wants to talk about it. But one thing real quick, um, I did forget to mention, if you do have any questions, of course, this is also your opportunity to do so. So you can ask them by the, um, by the live chat box. And I really strongly encourage you to ask those questions because what other two people to answer them? I have the, the, the two best candidates to do so. So please, um, please do that. Shout out anything you want. Yes. Not a yeah. problem. Whatever you'd yeah. like. Whatever we can yes, help please. you with uh, yeah. with your next orientation phase. So we just talked about theory and, 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 um, and, and practice. Yeah. So how about I'm going to show you a video about uh, the phases of leadership that was organized by our students in their third year and that was also part of, um, of one of their programs. Here we go.
I have a good feeling about today. As a CEO of ADECO, Saba speaking, influential person from Kenya. The weather is nice. I hope to hear a lot of uh, different perspectives on leadership. I think it's really important that you create a sense of self-awareness. So really know what drives you, what motivates you, where do you get your energy from, where do you leak your energy. Because you need self-awareness in order to lead yourself, in order to lead other people. There was a workshop where we took one hour to explain the connection between leadership and the colors of management drive to let people understand themselves and other people better to perform themselves authentically and to be able to perform better in a group. I think the most important aspect for me as one of the organizers is that we leave a lasting impression. I think with a lot of people we've done that today and that makes me very proud and uh, makes me very happy. At Nayarodo for the first time ever, um, I felt like I've been surrounded with, with only good people. I think the only reason that we've performed as well as we have is because everybody here is um, to the end of days there for each other. All right, so that was an example of the practical relevance and theory that Case was just talking about. I hope you enjoyed, uh, enjoyed, enjoyed watching that. So Stein, in your third year, you do a company project. Um, there's three different options that you can choose from, or you're gonna work as an entrepreneur or as a social entrepreneur, or you're going to work as a consultant. Could you share a bit more which, you, which one you chose and uh, what you learned from it and yeah. what it looked like? Yes. Uh, I can. Uh, what we chose was the social entrepreneurship track uh, because we wanted to do something that also makes impact because I think that really drives me, for example. Um, what we did, we uh, chose the social entrepreneur track and we uh, had set up a plan for uh, schools, high schools in Kenya for the Card Foundation uh, to see if we could somehow create some TED Talks. Uh, I think everybody knows the TED Talks uh, for the people in Kenya. So they could also be inspired by the people outside their country. Uh, that had a lot of challenges because in Kenya, the internet isn't that great. It's okay, but it's not as, uh, as right. well as uh, uh, watching a YouTube live stream at this <laughs> moment. Um, I think uh, uh, that really made impact. We wrote a plan for it, and uh, I hope that they can somehow also implement it, but that's, uh, that was and, after and the project. And ended. for myself or for, for everyone watching, how can I envision that? Like, who, do you have a mentor for this? Like, who helps you throughout this process? Yeah. And do you actually go to Kenya? Or yeah. do you actually go to those places? Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, some groups go to, uh, go to those places. So um, uh, we are uh, coached because that's the first part of your question. We are coached by some uh, entrepreneurs who are also lecturers here. Uh, for example, Herman van der Meulen um, and Rob Berting, uh, Arjen Hemelaar and uh, Erik Meijer. They coach us during the company project. Uh, they give us feedback. They also uh, rate our, uh, give us a grade, so they rate us. Um, and uh, they try with the feedback to improve the project as well as they can. And they do that during the project, but as Case mentions, also sometimes outside of the project. So, and it's also uh, in groups, right? It's always it is in, in groups. groups. Yeah. 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 Okay, great. In any case, personal development is very important here at Nairo. That's, that's what we're known for. So how do, you tr how do you challenge your students? Because obviously here at Nairo, we want to develop you as a person. So you're going to be getting out of your comfort zone. You're going to be challenged on your weaknesses. Um, how do you challenge your students in still a very positive vibe? Challenging my, um, uh, my groups. Um, I'm a teacher in accounting and finance. So Boring. <laughs> uh, I don't know what, uh, what your first thought was when you came to this university. You saw in your uh, schedule uh, you're going to have a lecture on accounting and finance. Did you think, yeah, exciting? Oh, boring. <laughs> so uh, that is, of course, my first challenge. And I would say uh, challenging my students is to go quite in depth. Because I can share with you, because I also teach in other universities, uh, that uh, the program of Nijenrode on the field of accounting and finance, it's quite intense. So uh, we work quite hard. Uh, that is challenging, and at the same time, we work in small groups. 
So uh, 20, 30, 35 students uh, max. So I can see if you understand the material or not. So uh, that is also quite challenging. And if you don't really need a challenge, I can provide them to you. Because uh, there are, of course, some students that are quite quantitatively strong. They have some more challenges with marketing and the other topics in the curriculum. Uh, but if you are quantitatively quite strong, then uh, you would not be the first person that I step up to and say, hey, you know what? If you score higher than an 8.5 on your final exam, uh, then I will offer you a free drink or something. Never like happened that. to me, by the way. A free Coca-Cola. No, you weren't that, you weren't that student. <laughs> no. no. Not in finance. Okay. But you're, you would be shocked what uh, students, yeah. what their performance is, if you just provide them a very small incentive. Incentive, exactly. Yeah. Incentives and, and, and also having that personal attention attention and being seen by a professor and having a connection. That is uh, what I enjoy very most. That yeah. is why I am a lecturer here. That's why I connected my life to, to mm -hmm. Nairobi. And that is, uh, that is what we believe in. Yeah. No, oh, great. So that's everybody's different, of course. So you kind of see that, uh, like you just mentioned, some people need the extra challenge on yeah. a different way. Um, Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. So we just talked about personal development. Stein, you have um, a course that you take from year one through year three. Yeah. That's called the Personal Leadership and Development Journey. What can you share about that course? Maybe some things that you do. Um, yeah, um, uh, maybe the learning outcomes, the things I learned from that course are most interesting. Yeah, exactly. Um, <coughs> what I um, really learned, I think there are multiple layers within the PLDJ course. And the um, way it's structured is that in the uh, first year you uh, uh, go on with, okay, who am I and why do I, think, uh, why do, I do the things I do? Uh, so what drives you, what, what is your passion, and, and how can uh, you be motivated? They do, the, for example, with a color test, with uh, strange colors, it's called management drives, uh, or uh, um, strength finder. And uh, by doing that, you really get insight in, okay, who am I, and how do I work, and how do I perform? Uh, in the second year, you can put that already into practice by the company project. I think we talked a, lo uh, a lot about it already. Uh, and now in the third year, we are going to do uh, a webinar uh, about leadership, but also uh, a bit about what could we have done during the corona crisis uh, uh, with, uh, with business in mind. Um, so by that, you re by that structure, you really develop during the course. And that's really, in my opinion, I think that's pretty valuable. And can you see yourself from the first day here being at Nairo to compared to three, uh, three years down the road? Do you see a big improvement or a big change in your personal development? Uh, I think the biggest change for my personality was that at uh, first I was uh, only focused on the goal, goal in mind, uh, reaching the goal as, as, uh, as fast as I could. Uh, and uh, during the time at Nairo, I think I got more people oriented, to be honest. Um, and what do you mean with that when you say people oriented? Um, Sometimes uh, I think the goal is not the most important thing, um, but the way towards the goal is also very important and also the people that are uh, contributing to that goal. And I think my priority uh, was now set more to the people that are working together to reach a goal than to the goal on itself. Yeah, great. So the, the, the most favorite part you missed of the PLDJ course, which is the, the mandatory sports program that is also part of that, where you do sports four yeah. hours in the week, yeah. uh, two, two, two times a week. How, what did you learn from the mandatory sports program? It didn't really help, but <laughs> I... Uh, uh, <laughs> but <laughs> well, that's had also, uh, that also had, uh, had other reasons. Um, now, um, the sports program, I think, is, is uh, a very important part of the PLDJ course. Uh, why I didn't mention the sports program is because, in my experience, it's also two different things. Because the PLDJ courses are in class, uh, working together with uh, the coaches in class, it's more talking. And, of course, the sports program is more physical outside, uh, also inside in the sports hall. Um, but I think uh, there are two things that are important within the sports program, things you learn. Uh, one is discipline, because uh, sure. you have a lot of evenings. Yeah, Case knows, because he also has been a student here. Uh, it can be much fun during the evening here on campus, uh, but then still you need to have the discipline to be there uh, at 8.30 uh, sharp in the morning. Uh, and that uh, creates character, I think. For sure. Uh, I mean, you might not feel great every morning when you wake up, but you got to do it. Because yeah. in the real life, you, if you're not feeling too great, you yeah. can call your boss and say, hey, I'm not feeling too shabby today. Um, but also team play, right, comes yeah. into play as well. Because you're going to, everything is, is, is in yeah. groups. So, yeah, yeah um, true. Yeah, true. yeah. yeah. great. 
for you, Case, um, could you give an example of a personal approach from a professor's standpoint? So Nairo is, of course, very small scaled, only a class of 35 students. Yeah, and that helps. So it helps me already uh, up front because uh, I already get a small uh, book of faces. So uh, I can already uh, inventory a little bit, okay, who's in my group. And I have a little bit of feeling on the, of their background. So at the moment, all the students hop in. Um, I already have some feeling, okay, who is who. I think after two or three lectures, that's a habit of mine. Uh, I at least uh, know all their names. So uh, I can speak to Stein because you are Stein. And uh, I believe in that. That's also what Nairode believes in. Uh, you're not a number, you're a student. Uh, we work with you. And at the same time, uh, I'm in a fortunate position to lecture not only in the first year, but also in the second year and in the third year. So that means I really get to know the students. That's also because of the curriculum and my position in it. Uh, that means that I can uh, get to know the students. And if they want, if it's, you desire that, we can have a personal connection. So I know from a lot of students their personal stories how they develop over those years, also what things are uh, fantastic, but also if there's a challenge in life that happens, um, then, I, uh, uh, then I'm aware of that. I mean, uh, I know the challenges in uh, the life of, uh, of Stein, for, uh, for example, when yeah. things were a little bit rough and when things are successful, that, uh, uh, that is not a problem. Yeah, so yeah. You're, you're just always there for each other yeah. during the, the tough times. Uh, I think times that's, that's good what you say, for each other. So it's also the other way around. Yeah. I think it's always uh, also uh, the expectations Case has from me. Uh, I just also want to make that, uh, that, that well enough. Right, yeah. And Case, you, um, you're a very liked professor here at the University of Nairode. I haven't been here too long myself, but um, I was very um, fortunate to be at the graduation of the 2016 cohort. Yes. And there you were announced as the um, professor of the year by the 2016 cohort. And there's a very special clip that we're going to be sharing shortly, but it's very personal. So yeah. maybe you can, can add something um, to of it. Of course, yeah. Uh, 2016 was the starting cohort of uh, the bachelor program. Uh, they were the first cohort that finished in 2019. Uh, the first group that did a three-year program here uh, after so many years that the bachelor uh, program was off campus. And uh, yes, I've seen them develop. They were the first guinea pigs, the starting group, and that had, uh, well, some issues, but also very uh, a beneficial side. Uh, the first group, the smallest group, with very much uh, personal attention. And uh, they elected me at the end as a professor of the cohort. I was elected before that as professor of the year, but professor of the cohort. And uh, I always tend to give a little bit more of personal attention. So uh, I asked uh, Job, uh, by the way, uh, you do not know that, but uh, Job is also responsible for all the technical part of this uh, whole live stream. Fantastic, Job. Yeah. And uh, <laughs> you can hear him by now. <laughs> and uh, I asked Job, uh, Job, do me a favor, uh, please uh, create a video of my uh, speech. I didn't thought I would show it because it's kind of personal, but it's the only way I think I can really show what a personal connection with the group is all about. Case as a professor of the year, uh, I would love to show it to you. Now we have to bring to the stage somebody who I think has been very, very special um, to this starting cohort. This person was a father figure to, I believe, each and every one of us in this cohort. Somebody who had a pronounced impact on the way that everybody studied and perhaps on the way that everybody here lives. I'm talking, of course, about an old Nairodian and this year's professor of the cohort. I'm talking about Gais Goman. Dear BSCBA 2016, it is so special to see you develop over the years. I'm going to give you, right at this graduation, your last challenge. You need to uh, cooperate with me on this. Uh, I prepared some nice lyrics. And uh, uh, you're going to do uh, the music together with me. Is that okay? Three, two, one. <laughs> Say what? <laughs> Okay, that's a nice rehearsal. And now, uh, you all in the audience, you think, okay, so we are safe on this one. That's not the situation. I need your help as well. Uh, you are going to provide me with uh, the bass line. Uh, the only thing you have to do is uh, point out the rhythm. Yeah, you got my drift. 
Now this is a rap, especially for you. And right about now, I'll tell you what to do. Let me hear you sing. At the moment I stop, it's the BSC that will pick it right up. I am so very proud. I want to shout it out loud. Standing here in front of this enormous crowd. Thanks for the honors. I am what you see. I'm the prof of the year of the BSC. It's the one and only Diggle Double Jim. So I hope you enjoyed the short clip. I think Case was trying to get his second career as going as a rapper, Snoop Dogg number two. Um, but he just stayed with his pro profession as a professor. I think that's a good idea. But a very ni nice <laughs> video. I'm very happy that we were able to share this. Case, could you tell us something about your finance and accounting class and how you, um, how you teach and maybe what do you expect from your students as well in, in, in the classroom? Okay. Uh, yes, of course. Um, uh, I always try to make uh, the courses a little bit more fun because uh, the topic on itself is, uh, can be quite, uh, quite challenging. So uh, accounting and finance, uh, I start my lectures always with, uh, with music. So if you come in, you always hear um, uh, Latin music. Because nice. Latin is uh, uh, what I love to do. I also love to dance a little bit. Salsa. And I try to, yeah, salsa, merengue. bachata, merengue, that kind Good. of stuff. Yeah, that's also how I met my beautiful wife. So uh, that's the reason. A Latina, nice. And uh, at, um, if you come too late as a student, then you're also obliged to do a dance. Or a or song. Sing. Yeah. Or sing. Yeah. And, uh, well, how my lectures is, uh, I think if I compare my lectures, uh, my lectures are fun, but at the same time also quite strict, I would say. Because uh, I do not allow my students to use any devices, no laptops, no mobile phones, because my experience is that uh, students get quite quickly distracted by everything that happens on social media, on uh, things that come on those uh, devices, and I love to have personal uh, interaction. Personal interaction uh, is uh, what we stand for at this university, and I really try to strive for that. But mm, the combination of having fun with uh, strictness is what I love to bring in class. But maybe Stein can share something about that on his experience, yes. because you, you were in my yeah, class. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. Yeah. So maybe you um, I think uh, strictness is not really the right word. I think it's more setting the rules clear uh, in the beginning and uh, making sure that people stick to it. I think it's a bit more of a nuance uh, because strictness can sound pretty harsh and you're not harsh at all, in my opinion. Um, I really love the way you uh, uh, create the interactiveness uh, within the lectures. So that's uh, a challenge now because it's online, because I think uh, also for you it can be become challenging to, to create the same uh, interactiveness now um, uh, as well as in the, in the classroom. Uh, but I think, uh, well, I, uh, I completely agree with your uh, statement. Yeah, Thank you. nice. So I think from the get-go, you were just st strict, but f respectful. Like for, for, for I like that word. For respectful. the students yeah. To, yeah. to know, okay, when I go to Case yeah. Gomez lecture, I better turn my phone yeah. off, I better not open my laptop, but yeah. I better pay attention. Well, it's, it's, it's respect. I mean, it, uh, the education that you follow here, it's an expensive education. Uh, you pay for value and you get value. I'm there full time to provide that value, but I also expect students to receive that value. So uh, that respect is not only for me, I require that, that respect is also for yourself as a youngster. You are very young if you start your bachelor education. And that respect is also for the people that fund your, um, uh, your, your, your education, tuition. Education, yeah. I mean, th that's also very important. Yeah, no, And that's definitely. also what I see growing during the years. The Personal development, of, right? Yeah. Uh, yeah, the respect <laughs> of the students. Yeah. yeah. Stein, you are in your third year, and in your third year, go and exchange. Could you tell a little bit what that looks like? I can tell what it looks like, but I can tell it from my own experience. And that's maybe a straight situation, because uh, normally everybody goes on an exchange, except for when you uh, are doing a board position within the NCV, the Student Association in Breukele. And that's what I did last year. I was part of the Heere 5. The Heere 5 is the board of, uh, of the Student Association. And uh, so I had to give up my exchange program uh, because I couldn't leave for half a year. Um, but what I hear from the experience of others is that it's maybe on academic level, the exchange is not the most challenging, but I think the added value, the real added value of the exchange program is the difference in culture, the different situation you are placed in. Um, you need to find your way in a completely new world. Um, and I think that is, uh, that brings a lot of personal development in which um, you really see people grow. Because the fun thing is, uh, I was here for half a year, so the people who left 
came back half, an hour, half a year later and I was there just observing how, uh, how they grew and that was visible. That was really visible. That's not the sales pitch, that's, uh, that that's really, <laughs> really the story. Yeah. Okay. If, if, if you allow me, I, yeah, of I, course. I, I would like to add to that because uh, I was lucky enough to be able to uh, teach the cohort of Stein just returning from their uh, exchange. And of course, I'm very curious because they went to Russia, China, uh, France, Malaysia, uh, uh, Malaysia uh, whatever. And uh, some of them I have on social media, so I see the most beautiful pictures, not of the university, but <laughs> no. of other things. And you're wondering, are they <laughs> studying? <laughs> and yes, uh, then I ask, of course, hey, uh, guys, who was challenged on the academical content? And of the 25 people, then four or five hands went up of some universities. But then this, my second question was, who was challenged from a personal perspective? And then almost all hands raised. Yeah. So that's also a compliment to Nairo and maybe Definitely. also the Netherlands, because uh, our European standard of uh, lecturing is quite high. Yeah. But at the same time, uh, I'm, well, I might say that um, uh, I would wish to have had the same education possibility with the whole traveling. I didn't do that in my bachelor education. No. So uh, Stein, you're lucky. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's lucky, but he's still didn't go either so yeah, true. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah that's true gotcha but no. i got an extra course of case so that was that's also that true. Was yeah. Yeah. There you go. also gives yeah. a lot of personal development yeah. Yeah. so staying um moving on to um the next question how did you hear about nairoda and what was your final factor of choosing for nairoda uh, i had some family history here actually uh, because my grandfather and uncle studied here, uh, my grandfather studied here uh, in the NIB time. Uh, so uh, uh, the Nederlands Opleidings Institute for Buitenland was right after the Second World War. Uh, and my uncle studied here in 1979. Uh, there were uh, my un my uh, grandfather was Heere Five, so uh, uh, wow. the same as I did. And my uncle was a bar, so he uh, ran the bar. So I had some stories from. For the uh, people on the stream, what is Heere Five? Here if I have already explained, but oh, it's fine. Okay. <laughs> That's fine. <laughs> it's, it's just, no, no, no. It's just, it's just the bit. board. It's good. It's yeah. good. Uh, uh, to, to explain it a bit more, it's the board of the student association. Yes. Uh, so um, uh, I heard a lot of stories. We're going to talk more about the student association in just okay. a bit. Yes, yeah. please. Yeah. Um, no, so, so I heard a lot of stories from home. And then uh, Nairo came to my high school to give a presentation. And I was so enthusiastic. And then every the whole puzzle fell uh, fell in the right, every, every piece fell in the right spot. Uh, so then I just asked my father really, uh, uh, can Nicely. I please go, can I please go? And then I said, okay, well, uh, you can get a loan. <laughs> so, yeah. Of course you couldn't reject it, right? If no, his dad yeah, and, and your dad came here, yeah, then true. yeah. Um, so maybe it's nice to take a look at a short video of some other bachelor students who give their opinion why they chose for the bachelor program here at Nairoda. I chose for the uh, Bachelor of Science in Business Administration because of the whole package. Since I left high school, I knew that this was the program I wanted to follow. Where I would follow it, I wasn't sure yet, but after the open day, I was sure that it had to be Night Oda. I have uh, visited uh, the University in Leiden, Erasmus in Rotterdam. But then when I came at Nairoda, I experienced something completely different. What I like is that the academic part is, is challenging and it's very diverse, but also obviously the campus life, which is, yeah, to be perfectly honest, quite unique here in the Netherlands. What I like the most from the education program of the bachelor is probably the small classes and the really interactive classes, because you're not just busy with the theory part, but actually put in as a practice. The professors are always there for you whenever you need help, whether it's weekend or not, and that's really special for a student. Even though it's, it's quite an institute, um, it also is a place where you can be yourself, and I highly value that. I think Nairoda is a lot more diverse than I originally thought. People are really different from each other but we all get along really well. All right, welcome back to our session. I hope you enjoyed watching the video. I know that a lot of you are asking questions, so thank you so much for those. At the end of our talk session, we are going to answer your questions. So great job, keep them coming, because we're ready for you. We're ready to help you answer those questions.
So going to you, Stein, you have lived on campus for the past three years because you followed the program here. Yeah. We've only had the program in Breukelen. Yeah. We're only starting in Amsterdam um, this August, so very exciting also. Could you maybe share your experience living on campus? <coughs> uh, yeah, I can. Um, the living on campus can be uh, very challenging, but uh, uh, mainly it's just a lot of fun. Um, it's it's just living uh, and eating together, uh, uh, watching movies together, go to the bar together, organize parties together, uh, and also sometimes sleeping together. That was also uh, part of the whole experience. Uh, I'm pretty sure that I'm not allowed to say that, but well, I'm still a student. Yeah. Um, gotta be real, right? Gotta be real. Um, no, I think, uh, so, so it's a lot of fun. Uh, but on the other hand, it's also challenging because you live so closely together that sometimes you get some frustrations. Uh, so, uh, for example, in my first year, and I think now it's also with the second year uh, bachelor, you live together on a room uh, with two people, uh, and sometimes it's a fit, and sometimes it's not really a fit. Um, and that can be challenging because you need to adapt to towards each other and you don't really have a private life because everybody just is there. And all, knows always. where you live, right? Everybody knows where I, somewhere, where I live. Yeah, indeed. They'll be come knocking at your door. Yeah, indeed. So that is that is a challenge. That can be a challenge because that's uh, uh, it, it gives a lot of new impressions uh, all the time, constantly. Uh, uh, and you, you constantly need to adapt to, uh, to yeah. that. Yeah. Which is sometimes also uh, also difficult. Right. Um, so we've already spoken of, or talked about this um, a little bit, but you are part of the, the NCV, the Student Association. Could you share some experience and, and talk a bit more about the, the NCV yeah. to, to give the, the students an, a, an impression yes, of what it, what it is? Um, <laughs> I think uh, Breukelen is not really, really the most fun place to study. Uh, let's start with that, uh, as long as there would not be the NCV, uh, because the NCV is a student association, it's completely uh, loose from Nairoda, although we really work closely together, uh, so we try to uh, reach the same goal sometimes, uh, and we try to create the most fun experience for student here, uh, students here on the campus. Uh, the NCV consists out of the, the board uh, and a lot of different committees, uh, and a committee uh, is a group of people, a team, who is working very closely together to reach a project. Um, for example, you have uh, different parties like a jazz night, which is a big gala for 700 people. We have a festival, a music festival in September. Now, I hope it goes on this year, but well. Uh, which is a festival for 1,000 people and the whole organization for that kind of stuff is, uh, is put on the students. Um, so that gives it a lot of personal development and also a lot of uh, experience in reaching uh, reaching project together right so you're just you're, you're just mentioning the fun parts but yeah. of course that's very important as well but what are some of the other committees that you that we have good that question. are a bit more good serious right for example all like funnier yeah, that's but true. I mean <laughs> true uh, good question uh, and indeed uh, more nuance uh, for example, this year I uh, stopped with being Hero 5, and this year I'm... Um, what is Hero 5? Hero 5 is, uh, shall we ask the question three times? <laughs> no, but uh, a bit more in-depth okay, maybe Hero this five, time. Okay, Hero 5 uh, manages the whole uh, association. So also the committees, they make sure that the budgets are reached, they make sure that it's not all loose ends just reaching for something. They uh, try to structure the whole organization of all the different things. Uh, and they are also, in the end, uh, head responsible for, uh, for the performance of the whole association, for the performance of all students together. Um, also from a finance perspective. Also from a finance perspective. Because how do I have to see this? Is this part of Nairode or...? No, it's not part of Nairode, but uh, almost uh, every student becomes a member, actually. So every year uh, a group of students comes to Nairode and then they decide, I'm going to join the NCV. That's so a very good remark, yeah. by the way. I, I cannot stress that enough because I think there's a very important difference between the NCV, where all the students are part of, versus uh, maybe a student association, as you, would, as you would know it, in Utrecht or Amsterdam at CORE or anything where you have a separate group of students that is part of an individual club. This is all one big family. Yeah, and you can choose to do content or you can choose to do different things. Right, I was part of the uh, student band, the Booze. 
the and Stein, and Stein as, well. as well, right? Stein yeah. is a singer, by the way. Yeah, yeah. I know yeah. that. Great. I've, I've seen it perform. That all the <laughs> 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 no. All right. So this was the um, the student association in Breukelen, but of course we also have a student association in Amsterdam, the JCV, and um, Case also is part of that association, right? True. Yeah. So maybe you can tell us a bit about the JCV, but also about our location in Amsterdam. Of course. Um, yeah. And and what are what's the difference for you between Breukelen and Amsterdam? Okay. Yeah. Uh, I also uh, have a history of teaching in Amsterdam, also in the MSc program, the MBA program, and the former BBA program. Uh, uh, JCV was started in the BBA program. I'm still in touch with some of the founding fathers because you can imagine that you're um, studying in a new location like Amsterdam, then there must be kind of a commitment. So you could just feel that there was a desire to get an association. And an association that you want to be linked to the Nairo, the feeling, the Nairo, the family, but still it's the new one. So that's why it's called uh, the YSTV, the youngest. The youngest. Youngest Students Association. And uh, located in Amsterdam. Amsterdam is a bit different. And not from an academic point of view, because um, uh, you cannot avoid uh, uh, teachers Case like coma. me. Uh, I'm going to do exactly the same program in Amsterdam as well as in Breukelen. So from a content part, it's different. But the whole experience, as uh, Stein just uh, shared, 24 hours with one group, yep. that is beautiful. But at the same time, it can be also something that you are a little bit afraid of or you have kind of other activities that you want to do. Because that student association, maybe Stein can share a little bit later about that, it also requests quite some time. Yeah. Uh, so living on campus, doing everything together, uh, maybe you want to set your priorities a little bit different. Yeah. And you want to learn from other activities besides Nijerode. Uh, in Amsterdam, you're also on a fantastic location. It's on the Keizersgracht. So it's uh, uh, perfectly vibrant. Yeah, if you open the door, you immediately feel every business just happening. If you open the door here in Breukele, you can feel everything happening on campus. So uh, those are, well, it's not a matter of good or bad, but it's totally different. If I can add a bit on the difference between the... Yes Real quick, and, and then um, yeah. we're going to go over to the video of the, yeah, of the NCV. Cool. Cool. Yeah, that's cool. Okay. Uh, the NCV, I think, is more uh, a study association, which is a good thing. Um, and uh, the NCV is more a student association. The difference is that the student association will bring more entertainment, more activities, uh, and the uh, study, study uh, association will be more focused on, okay, how can we improve the academic program and how can we make sure that everything for the students and the academic uh, results are, is... Uh, is Yeah, I think, I mean, there, you know, there are two different dynamics, yeah. but also in Breukelen, it's already going on since 46 and there since 2011. True. So, I mean, you know, it's, 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 it's two different dyna yeah, dynamics. True. I think that's the best way it's, to describe um, it. It's fun to be the first group. Yes, guinea pigs. All right, guys, I would like to show you a short video of the NCV.
hope you enjoyed watching that one as well. So Stein, we're going over to the core values of Nairode, the leadership, entrepreneurship and stewardship. How have those core values played a role for you during your time here? I think um, it's not about only about the values, but it's also about the whole mentality you get. And I think they are placed into those three values. What I mean with that is that uh, during some courses, for example, also sustainability courses, entrepreneurial courses, uh, marketing, management, finance, everything is uh, uh, brought back to leadership, entrepreneurship and stewardship. Um, how it affects me as a person, um, for example, now uh, during the corona crisis, me and a friend, uh, one of my best friends also here from the Nairobi campus, Chiba, uh, we started an initiative to help and consult uh, companies for free with their uh, companies. So how can we reach the same uh, profits or how can we uh, get money in to just survive the corona crisis? Well, we saw a lot of uh, chaos on the market and we saw, okay, well, well, we need to make the difference and the impact here. And I think that is also uh, a result of what Nairode uh, has brought me during the courses. Okay, well, we need to uh, watch over each other. We need to make sure that you uh, be innovative with the things you want to achieve. Um, and with all the courses, it, it brings the result of, of just the whole mentality you get as a person. Right. I think that is the core of uh, what the values yeah. are for. Great. So one last question for you. And then I did receive uh, all the questions, so we have some time to answer those. Um, hopefully you're almost graduating, right? In just a few short months. What are your plans? You already talked a bit about the, the company that you just started. What are your other plans for after graduation? <laughs> well, uh, I don't really have a plan at this moment. No, I do have, a, have some plans, but it's like a, uh, plan A, B, C, D, E, F, G. Uh, so I still need to uh, pick one. Um, I am busy with a lot of projects, uh, for example, the student initiative, but I'm also working for, uh, for a company, uh, actually, of, of one of the lecturers here at Nairode. Um, it's a consultancy company, um, so I still need to find my path in, okay, what opportunities arise and which opportunities I want to dive into. Uh, and if not, then I have a plan B of uh, doing a master's immediately, and otherwise I will postpone it to, uh, to a bit later. Great. So it sounds like you're not going to be chilling anytime soon because no. you have a lot on your plate. Yeah. Yeah. Do get your and master's time. So postpone it, <laughs> yes, but do it. <laughs> do yes. it eventually. Yeah, that's yeah, yeah. what my father says as well. Okay. <laughs> Sometimes your you second have to... father, right? Yeah. <laughs> Sometimes. Yeah. In case the last question for you, what is one takeaway that you would give to our potential bachelor's students, Whoa. the ones that are watching, for example? Okay. Um, they are my uh, future bachelor <laughs> students, uh, dear students of the next BSc cohort. I'm looking forward to see you, but only to see you when uh, you are willing. You are willing to go for a challenge. You are willing to be open. So actually show who you are, not only to yourself, but also to your fellow teammates and to me and to all the other lecturers. You are willing to develop as a person because that is something we can facilitate, but that is something that you want to do. Um, you should be willing to put your maximum effort in not only the content, but everything that happens around you. It's for full three years, including international um, experience. If you are ready for Nairode, then Nairode, including me, is ready for you. Beautiful. I think that's, that, that, was, that was spot on. So thank you very much for that case. So we're going over to the questions that we received. So the first one goes to you immediately. Oh, wow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so get cool. ready. This is the form of feedback that <laughs> we can have right now. I mean, otherwise we would get it from, uh, from the group. All right. So thank you very much. Yeah. So you said you also teach at another university. Yeah. In your opinion, what's the main difference between other universities and Nairoda? Oh, nice question. Yeah. Um, to be totally honest, I only lecture on private universities, so uh, because well, uh, th that's the way how I love the interaction, and maybe that is also the the main difference. I mean, if you hear also from bachelor students, because bachelor students after their uh, bachelor they sometimes do the master in uh, well a regular education, and then they sit together with well a couple of hundred students, and then uh, in my lectures I had always uh, the same thing when uh, people uh, came in just to shake their hand. How are you doing? Welcome in my class. And one of my uh, former students, they did that as well when they were at Erasmus. They went to their professor and they said, thank you very much for your lecture. I enjoyed it. My name is Lucas. 
And the, the, the guy was totally shocked. So um, bottom line, I think just uh, having the personal connection instead of being a number, uh, I would say that is one of the major difference. But I can mention quite a lot. Right, I, mean, I know you can probably. <laughs> I know we don't have that that time. I know you can probably talk 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 about this forever. Yeah. Um, the next question, I think, is going to be my first question of the night. So oh, cool. <laughs> you guys get a chance to take a take a little mini break. Oh, cool. Cheers. Cheers. Could you <laughs> yeah, the <ride> is <laughs> gone. And it's gone. And it's gone. Could you please explain the admissions criteria and also what you look into during interviews? So the admissions procedure is quite um, um, lengthy, but first off, it's important for us, for you to have been to an open day, or for example, this way, have learned or heard something about the program. Afterwards, you're going to start your application online. Everything is done online from a motivation letter to a letter of recommendations um, to your diploma. Um, after that, you're going to submit it to our admissions office, and once everything is submitted, they're going. The admissions office is going to get in touch with the recruiters, with myself, or with my colleague Anna Marie, and then um, we're going to tell them what we think of you, because obviously we're the first point of contact, because we would love to meet you and see who we're going to uh, invite to Nairobi. And afterwards, you're going to be invited to um, for a personal interview as well with one of our program manage managers as well as an assessment. And the assessment consists of an IQ and EQ test. And afterwards, you get um, you either get accepted, you don't get accepted, and that's where the admissions procedure stops, or you're going to put on a conditional list. And this is whenever there's still a few doubts, um, um, we're going to make a decision just a little bit later. So those are the um, admissions procedure. And then one, what we really look for, um, I can't say we look for one thing specifically. Um, you know, if you're a straight A student, so you're only having nines and tens in, at Fabio, um, but then your personality or your interview didn't go um, that well here. Um, it, it's, it's a bit of a mixture that we look at. So, I mean, grades are important, but your motivation is very important. Why do you want to study business and why a university? And also, what do you think that you're going to add to the group here at Nairode? Because that's also important. Um, and what have you organized outside of your school activities? So have you done volunteer work? Have you organized an event? Also to see that you have that little bit of entrepreneurial spirit in you already. If I can add a bit, yes. Um, I did uh, eight years uh, uh, before I finished my high school, um, but I still got in uh, because I had, had the motivation, but also the practical experience. So I think indeed uh, that is also very important. It's not only about about the grades, the numbers. It's also about your personal experience. Uh, so indeed, yeah. yeah. And that personal experience can be totally different for anyone. Yeah. Be yourself. Be yourself. Because exactly. all those students that we have in the group, they're totally different. Right. And that's what <laughs> makes it really unique yeah. too, right? Yeah. I mean, a nice melting yeah. pot of different personalities, yeah. drives. Different cultures. cultures. That can, can be challenging, but also at the same time powerful, if you want it. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Yeah, Great. Sure. And then I have another question. Is there a difference between the study in Breukele and Amsterdam? So I think Case already gave like uh, the, the, the difference of the two um, locations um, and Stein very much talked about Breukel, of course, because this is where he studied. Um, it's the exact same academic program. Case, you will get Case here in Breukel and, and you will get Case in Amsterdam as well. It's more about the experience. So would you like to study here on campus, living with a roommate, 24 seven being surrounded by your classmates and having faculty um, see you pretty much every day? Or would you rather um, live on your own or still live at home and have a, a bit more um, free time? Uh, or not, not free time, but um, be a bit more free. So not having to- You can have multiple things to choose from. Yeah. Because there's not only one association as here in Breukelen, but there are a lot of them. Because yep. you can join the core, or you can join that. You can join that. You can join. So yep. I think the choices are more, but it's just uh, how you how you want to uh, to follow. Exactly, the it's 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 very study. relevant. Yep. I think you know. And then I we also always encourage for students who don't know yet where they want to study to visit bo both locations. Yep. To to because it's just a feeling and an impression that you get if you walk here into the, into Breukelen or in Amsterdam where you're like oh my gosh I'm in, on the Keizersgracht and here you are in a beautiful 13th century estate um, so I would say 
come come here um, and you know take a look at both universities. Maybe I can add a little bit real, to real it. Real quick, because we're yep. gonna have to wrap it up. Check for yourself how you would cope with group dynamics. So if you are in love of group dynamics and really feel, well, if I work with a group, then I actually perform way better. Maybe Breukel is your thing. If you think, oh gee, groups, let me do a little bit my own thing and I want a little bit more freedom, maybe Amsterdam could be yours. Yeah. Couldn't agree more. That's a, yeah, that's a really good, good way of putting it. All right, both of you, thank you so much for have, um, joining me tonight for this session because without the two of you, it wouldn't have been this fun and informative. And to everyone watching, thank you so much for have tuning in. Right after this live session, you're going to receive an email with some additional information about the bachelor program. And we hope that we have answered your questions. If we did not answer all your questions through the live chat or us here at the table, we're going to finish answering them through the chat. We hope very much to see you soon on one of our campuses, um, either in Breukelen or in Amsterdam. And for now, I wish you all the best with um, whatever, whatever you're doing right now. And we hope to welcome you soon here. Stay safe and healthy. And from us all here, have a good night. Because Monica came